and this is a vehicle we put together so we can better understand autonomous driving to help us make the best autonomous driving processors for our customers. In this vehicle, we can turn the autonomous driving system on by using the HMI here. Along with turning the system on and off, we can use this HMI in order to inject failures into the system. One of the things we like to study in our autonomous driving platform is fault tolerance. And so with all these buttons, we can fail or simulate the failure of various processors and sensors. You also have a display here that shows some of the perception in the vehicle. This vehicle has nine cameras, all that are being processed by Renesis processors. Also, we have a scanning LiDAR and a high definition map, also a differential GPS system. So to start the demo, we just use the HMI and we're off. With our high definition map, we can stop at stop signs that we detect with cameras, wait for oncoming traffic to pass. We can detect traffic or vehicles on our obstacle course with scanning LiDAR and with our forward facing cameras. Forward facing cameras in this vehicle can also detect things such as lane markings and our speed limit signs. Another interesting feature of our vehicle is our high definition map. And one thing we wanted to study in our vehicle this year was how do we address the fact that, you know, while high definition maps are essential to autonomous driving, uh, roads can change. And so one of the things this vehicle can do is when it sees a construction sign, which is often an indicator of a high definition map needing to be updated, whenever we see a construction sign, we suggest to the user that the high definition map in the car be updated. So this indicator that we have here in the HMI came because we just passed a construction sign. So when I press this button, we've actually triggered an over the air update of the high definition map in the vehicle. And what we studied this year was how could we make that hack proof? So we worked with our partner, Airbiquity, to learn what are the state of the art cyber secure mechanisms to make sure that we can bring a new HD map into this vehicle with a secure fashion and to keep the car safe. As we continue driving the loop, we can see that this vehicle can understand its position on the high definition map they're using a GPS signal. We also have worked a lot to develop some software to use our LiDAR to be able to detect different landmarks on the map, such as signs, traffic lights, to also assess where this vehicle is on the map versus these other landmarks. Also, you'll notice in the top corner of our display, we're monitoring the total power consumption of all 10 Renesis processors that are running in the vehicle. And those 10 processors are offering the full autonomous driving stack. That includes vision processing, LiDAR processing, and redundancy that we use for a functional safety concept. There's many processors in this vehicle in this collection of 10 that are actually running redundantly. So with 50 watts and 10 chips, you're averaging about five watts per processor. Now here, I'm gonna ask the car to go left at an intersection, but we have to wait for a green light and we have to wait for oncoming traffic to pass us. You can see we're detecting the oncoming traffic with our camera as well as a DSRC radio. And when the car passes, we can make our left turn. Here we can detect the stop sign and we wait for clear traffic and we make our turn back onto the outer loop. Now here we can make things a little bit more interesting. A big part of what we study in autonomous driving is not just low power, low cost uh, compute for computer vision and for LiDAR processing, but also functional safety. So what I'm gonna do right now is simulate a failure in one of our sensor fusion processors. And so this vehicle has now moved to its backup processor in order to maintain its autonomous driving mode. And we're actually now looking for an empty parking space. So the vehicle knows there's a failure and it's seeking a safe place to park. Now it didn't choose any of these parallel parking spots we just passed because the car has detected that they're all full with pedestrians, and other vehicles. So we have to wait at our red light until we get a green and then look for an open parallel parking spot. So here on the display, you can see that our LiDAR scan shows us that the spaces are empty and so the vehicle can parallel park safely. You'll also notice on our HMI screen that during this entire process of looking for the parking space, we've had a failed sensor fusion processor. And there we can see the car is parked. So now we'll drive back onto the outer loop and take our autonomous vehicle to its home position. Again, we detect the stop sign. And after checking that the traffic is clear, we'll turn onto the outer loop. As we drive down the loop, we can see some of the things we detect, such as vehicles in the distance, 
or speed limit sign as well as the lane marks on our driving track. And if I tell the car that I want to go to the drive parking mode, it means that I want to autonomously drive to our home parking space. And our vehicle will select the parking space and we'll do a reverse perpendicular park. That concludes our demonstration. Thank you.